2012. What a strangely normal year. When I say the year 2012, does that ring a bell in your head? Yes? No? Okay, how many of you here have heard of the Mayan prediction that the world was supposed to end in 2012? Well, let me tell you something that the Mayans didn't know. The world did not end 11 years ago. I think we're all aware of that. Instead, it will end somewhere around the 25 million century, or around the year 2 billion 500 million 2023. I know, all of us here will be long gone by then, but it would be pretty cool to know what would happen, right? Well, that's exactly why I'm here today. There are three major theories about the final hours of existence in our universe, being the Big Freeze, it's a pretty cool theory, the Big Rip, and trust me, yes, it is as bad as it sounds, and the Big Crunch. I'll explain them one by one to you and tell you what would happen to you if you were there. So this first one's a pretty simple one to explain, but we will need to know more about the life cycle of a star. So all stars start out as stellar nebula, and that either produces a normal size average star like our sun, or a massive star like US Guti, the largest sun in the universe. And just to give you an idea of how big these massive stars are, even Arcturus, which is a sun 100 times the size of our sun, it's only classified as merely an average star. And after a while near the end of its life, the average star turns into a red giant, and the massive star turns into a red supergiant. And after a long time, both of these mad enormous stellar objects explode, with the red giant turning into planetary nebulae, and the red supergiant turning into a supernova that can be seen from light years away. And after a long time, both of these explosions will cool down, with the planetary nebula producing a very small but extremely dense white dwarf, and the supernova producing either a powerful neutron star or a black hole in rare cases. And trust me, there is a black hole there, you just can't see it because it sucks in all the light around it. <laughs> okay, so in this theory, we all know that the universe keeps on expanding outwards. But as the universe expands, more and more stars are being created, right? But in this theory, even though there are more stars being created near the outer edge of the universe, even more stars near the center of the universe will have already gone through a process just like this one and ended up as either a dead white dwarf or one of these. And even these dead stars, such as the neutron star and the black hole, they'll eventually run out of energy as well because black holes emit Hawking radiation and neutron stars emit radio waves, gamma rays, X-rays, a bunch of different rays. And in this theory, the center of the universe will start freezing and temperatures will drop as low as absolute zero. That's negative 273.15 degrees Celsius. And that's over three times as cold as Antarctica. At this stage, it'll be virtually impossible for anything to live, even, not even humans, and the universe is pretty much done for. Pretty chilly way to go. Okay, so this next theory involves something called dark energy. And don't worry. It's not as scary as it sounds. So this dark energy is what's pushing the universe to expand outwards so quickly. And as the universe expands, so does the dark energy. And as that expands, it turns into something known as phantom energy. If the amount of phantom energy increases faster than the expansion of the universe itself, then the big rip is bound to happen. Think of it like this. You have a balloon and you continue to fill it with water. That balloon's gonna hold out for a little while, but as we continue to fill it with water, we all know what would happen. And the poor guy filling the balloon would take an unexpected shower. But in this case, it's not the balloon that explodes. Everything, and I do mean everything, will be ripped apart into nothingness. The galaxies of this universe torn apart one by one, and naturally Earth wouldn't last very long either. Neither would you. Because as the stars and planets rush away one by one, oh, goodbye Mars, there goes Jupiter, so will the sun. And when the sun goes away, the only source of heat and light in the solar system will have disappeared. Earth would become very, very, very cold, and so would you. Now, if you're lucky, you'll die then of the extremely cold temperatures. And I say if you're lucky, because what happens next is the worst stage of the Big Rip. It's almost exactly what happened in the movies. You'll be able to see your body break up into molecules and then atoms, 
and then electrons and protons, and eventually those will also be torn apart into nothingness. Not a very nice way to go either. Okay, so this final theory is called the Big Crunch. And in this theory, we all know that, well, everything started, our universe started with a tiny super dense blob consisting of all the four different forces that will always exist and always have existed. Gravity, electromagnetism, and the little and large nuclear forces. Somehow, I don't know how, this tiny blob managed to explode and the universe started expanding outwards at an incredible rate. After some time, it became the universe we know now. In this theory, the mass of the expanding universe will become greater than the force expanding it, which is the dark energy, and what will happen is essentially the polar opposite of the Big Bang. So think of it like this. That force right there, remember that dark energy we were talking about earlier? You know, the one that was pushing the universe outwards? Let's imagine the dark energy is that white arrow. And right now it's supporting two heavy metal boxes. That is a very strong force right there, the dark energy. And as you can see, it's supporting those two boxes, no problem. But what happens if we add one more? Now there are three boxes. And as you can see, the force is still pretty strong. It's still holding all of them up. But as you can see, it's also gotten weaker. And so we add another one, and then another one. And what happens next? We add our final heavy metal box. Everything falls apart. And that force down there, that broken little arrow, that's the dark energy. Now, you might be wondering, okay, why am I adding all these different boxes on? After all, the universe never gets any heavier, does it? That's wrong, because as the universe expands outwards, galaxies, stars, and planets, all these incredibly heavy objects that were never there have just suddenly appeared out of nowhere. And that is a metal box that we've just added on. That force down there is the force expanding the universe. And the big crunch is gonna look like this, except imagine it's going out in every single direction, northeast, south, west, left, right, up, down, every single direction crumbling and it will turn back into that tiny blob of the four condensed forces. Okay, so obviously this is gonna be all in the future, and the interesting thing about this theory, the one that separates it from all the others, is that after a very, very long time, another Big Bang will happen, and then another universe will be created out of that tiny blob right there, which makes us wonder. That first Big Bang we were talking about earlier, you know, the one that created our universe, that might not be the first Big Bang that ever happened. Maybe a long time before that, we're talking a couple hundred trillion years here, another universe was ended by a big crunch, and the intelligent creatures inside that universe got crushed into nothing. And then our universe was born. It's a really thought-provoking topic, and I really encourage you to do some research on it, because it unlocks a whole new realm of ideas about the faraway past. Perhaps there are some alien civilizations out there that have somehow developed a strategy to survive these doomsday events, and perhaps we can learn from them and survive the big freeze, the big rip, and the big crunch. Now, I know all of us here sitting in this theater right now will have no chance of experiencing that, but normal to humans, because Spoiler alert, another free cosmic event is gonna wipe us out first, when our sun decides to call it quits and explode. Now, obviously all this will be in the future, as I just said, but I really, really do encourage you to do some research on it. For example, there are so many different questions. Do multiverses exist? Are there parallel universes out there where Bissy is in America? We don't know because we've never explored that area before, and I encourage you to do it. Now, I've already done some exploring of my own, but it is a really, really thought-provoking topic. And it's these types of questions that have kept humankind curious for millennia, and hopefully kept you curious about what I've had to say this afternoon. So before I end this talk, I would like all of you to consider a question. Which of the three doomsday events would you prefer? The big freeze, where everything dies of hypothermia. The big rip, where everything gets torn apart into nothingness or the big crunch where everything essentially gets squished into a tiny blob. Once again, thank you for your time and see ya.